Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday Night Connection Bible Study Group. We're glad that you're here with us this evening and look forward to hearing what Pastor Rocky has for us. Before we begin, we'd like to take this opportunity and invite you to join us on Sunday for our virtual service at 9.30 a.m. The service is streamed on our Facebook page, YouTube channel, and website at www.svccconnect.org. You can also join Pastor Rocky Monday through Saturday at 12 noon for the video series, Words of Hope. And now, let's begin our study from God's Word. Glad you guys have tuned in. Too loud, Gordon? I have to be careful with the inflection voice-wise because his ultra-sensitive gear picks up every little ding. And so I just blew Gordon's ears out. So praise the Lord for Gordon. Be praying for him because uh, it's a, you know, I look it over at, at the gear and all the tech and all the wires and all the buttons and the clickers and uh, he lost me at hello, okay? So technically I'm just thankful that Gordon is willing to share his skills in getting out God's word to y'all. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for who you are, for your control in it all. And, and not just the control, because you love us and desire to have that special, unique, amazing relationship that you had with Moses way, way back in the day, Father. You desire to have that similar relationship with us. And because of Jesus, that can happen. So, Father, I, it's not about control and being the puppet master. You give us free will to choose. So I pray, Father, that we would choose to honor you by diving into your word and just uh, knowing more about it tonight. Bless all the people that have tuned in. Be with us today, Father, that ultimately we see Jesus through it all. And we just praise you and thank you that you're in control of this, this uh, issue and circumstance that's going on in the country and the world. And you got it, Father. So we trust you and love you. And we, we look forward to hearing your word tonight. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so people, uh, last time we got together, we're actually on session seven of a 33-week kind of study going through God's word. So we're on session seven, seven weeks into this particular study. And it's been super exciting because... We're learning about how faithful God always is on every one of his promises, on his love for us, his grace, his mercy. And man, is he not a God of second, third, fourth, fifth chances. He just is, as you can see through the, the beginning of God's word all the way to where we're at now in the book of Joshua. Uh, he has such great patience and grace for us and for the Israelites too as they uh, continue to spin that cycle of seeing God's amazing, epic, biblical power in the form of miracles. And we saw that with Moses and the, the, the plagues and then the parting of the Red Sea and the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire and leading the people and feeding millions of people in the desert with manna and quail and just continuing to do amazing things. And the people saw that and experienced it. But now there's another chance for the people. Moses is about to die. He is transitioning leadership over to another spectacular Bible great, Joshua. And uh, Joshua was one of the names that Jen and I decided on when it came to naming our son Joshua. It was either going to be Joseph, who we, we learned about a couple of weeks ago, or Joshua. Anyway, so both those men represented just fantastic lives of integrity and character. And, and so, at any rate, so... Here we are, and and I was having I had a conversation with my daughter on the way here about how God, He loves us so much, and He has this expectation of us that we are to obey Him completely. And if the Israelites were able to do that, obey Him completely, He would have blessed them completely and amazingly. But because of their disobedience, they cycled through this rebellion and this pain and this suffering and bondage and enslavement and. They had to keep learning over and over again. And, then, you know, we talked last week about the distance 
from Egypt over to Canaan, the promised land, it should have taken that group about three weeks, even to move a million plus people across that particular distance. Three weeks. It took them 40 years because they had to continue to learn the lesson of disobedience, <laughs> what that meant, and that cycle they spun around. And so God said, okay, you, you, you're not learning. You take another lap around the wilderness. I was teasing uh, you know, the, the people this past Sunday about God being an amazing condition coach. He uh, had a workout for the Israelites that took 40 years to get through. 40 years of a workout is pretty intense. But they had to keep learning. And, and they wouldn't learn. So here it is. Joshua must be thinking it's a deja vu situation because 40 years earlier, they stood at the exact same place they were standing now. And But the difference is the rebellious people who would not learn, a whole generation of them died out. And now it was a new generation of people who were receptive to God who bought into the complete obedience and the trust of God so that they could enter into the promised land. Let me back up and say that the faithful and amazing servant, Moses, was not allowed into the promised land. And that was the conversation that I was having with my daughter, that God expects obedience all the time, every time, not just some of the time. If you obey 50% of the time, you're living in disobedience. And, and God expected Moses to be obedient every time. And, and you, you know what, what, what cost Moses the promised land was the situation where the people were frustrating Moses, and he was angry, and they were complaining and crying about they needed water. They had, and so God said, speak to the rock, and the rock will pour forth the water for my people. Moses was so frustrated with the people complaining and bellyaching and whining and blaming and passing the buck that instead of speaking to the rock, he hits the rock with the staff that Moses had given him, that the Lord had given him, and, and the water came out. Well, because of that disobedience, Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land. He was allowed to see it but not enter it. And there was a really kind of a, 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 a neat encounter that God and Moses had. He said, God said, to, the Lord said to Moses, you're, you're going to climb this mountain, Mount Nebo. From that mountain, you will be able to see the promised land, but you will not enter it. And on that mountain, Moses, you will die. You will not come down the mountain. You will die there. And Moses died. The faithful, incredible servant Moses, who did more amazing things on, with God's power than any man before or ever will, again, apart from our Lord Jesus. And Moses died on Mount Nebo. So the transition then and the leadership transfer goes to Joshua. And Joshua, and I, and I think, man, what, what an opportunity. You know, God knew that Joshua was something special. Remember, Joshua was one of the spies. He and Caleb that went and spied originally on the promised land and came back and said, it's an awesome land filled with milk and honey, flow with milk and honey, let's go get it. The people are, you know, big and, and mean and nasty, whatever, but we, but we got the Lord on our side, doesn't matter. So he was one of the two spies that came back with a good report. We remember that story where the others said, nope, can't do it, people are too big and nasty. So God, God knew that this, this Joshua was somebody special. I, I, that's my prayer for, for us, and in particular the, the, the men and women out there who are in leadership roles. How are you leading? Are, are you leading in a way that God has confidence in you and that you are trustworthy and that you obey him no matter what completely and not just 50, 60, 70, but 100% of the time you are obedient to the Lord. And when you do that, God will bless you. It won't be easy because people will go come against you and that's just a guarantee. But, but we have a lot of great leaders out there. And I pray that you lead in a way that honors the Lord and you obey him completely. Let's, let's look at some of the text here. We are in the book of Joshua. It, it is one of, the, one of the most awesome, motivating, and encouraging scriptures is in there. And it, it is Joshua 1.7. It says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all 
the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. This is a this is an awesome family uh, um, edict as well. That you you declare this for the family. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That 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 little few verses is so powerful, so amazing. And, and it's basically saying your part, people, and especially in today's climate, our part is not to be afraid, not to hide, not, not to be anxious. It says none of that. Our part, two things, be strong and have courage. That's what, that's our part, people. And I know it's tough for many of us. Some of us are just the, 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 the we just are bent towards we worry, we have anxiety, we we have a, a great deal of concerns, especially with the, the the virus and the situations that we we can't see and we don't know how things will recover. We don't know about jobs. We don't know about money. We don't know about health. We don't know that for our kids. But but none of that has changed really. I mean, we even before the virus, you didn't know what was going to happen. Before and and now because this virus has been uh, upon us and it indeed is nasty and serious and we got to be smart and vigilant and guarded. God is saying to you to you guys out there to me. I need to hear it. Be strong and have courage. But you do that. Look, look, look what he's saying. There's some absolutes there. When you do that, it's not just only be strong and have courage. Just obey him. Obey God. Obey the book. Make sure it stays in your heart, in your mind. You live it. And then it says, if you can be strong, have courage, do what the book says, do what the Lord says, obey him, it says, then you will be prosperous and successful. Who doesn't want a little prosperity and success? You do your part, and God is going to do his part. And the awesome part about that is it says at the end, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Be strong and courageous. Obey the book. You'll be prosperous and successful. And guess what? You, God goes with you. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. He's with you all the time. So man, there is some positive things in that. And people, I get it. You either believe this or you don't. There's no gray area. That's what's awesome about our Lord Jesus. Our God, our Lord, is the absolute truth. He is the truth, the way, the light. He's it. He is it. So we look now. So Joshua has obviously found the trust of the people. He is a great leader. He is a perfect uh, transition from Moses to Joshua now. So now they've got to actually, it's go time. They're going to head into Canaan, but they're going to set up some reconnaissance. There's going to be some intel issues. Some spies are heading in now to see exactly what they're in for. Now, let me stop there and say that if you have a question or you have an insight or you have uh, something you'd like to share with the team, you can, you can text my number, 570-660-9760, or Gordon, do you connect... Okay, so just, just go with my number. You can text a question or, or an insight to that number. It'll pop up here on my phone, and we'll, we'll go from there if you have anything. I am on my own. No fact checker tonight. The fact checker is home. I'm sure she'll be abusing me eventually here with some kind of, you know, snarky text or some kind of, you know, fact check that I'm messing up or mispronouncing. But at any rate, here we go. So first, first things first. Now, here's what's cool, too, is that now, now the Lord is enlisting not an, uh, an Israel, Israelite's help. There's someone else that's going to be pulled in 
which is an awesome indication of where God's going, that it's not just going to be the Jews, not the, not the Israelites. He's going to pull in some other folks. And we know the story of the prostitute Rahab. Okay, and this, this, this comes up in, in chapter 2 of Joshua. I'm going to read quickly here, and then we'll talk about it. Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim to go over to the land. He said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered. They got into the, they got in past the walls and into the house of the prostitute named Rahab, and they stared, stayed there. Now, of course, the, the, the king of Jericho, he's got intel out there. He finds out that the Israelites have come. It's no a secret that the people of the land in the promised land heard about Israel, heard about the Israelites coming, God's people, what had happened, the stories, the, the plagues in Egypt, the miracles performed, and, and the people were shaking in their boots, really, not, not wondering what in the world's going to happen. So they knew the king of Jericho hears two spies in my city. We got to go find them. So, of course, there's a huge uh, quest looking for the, 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 uh, the spies. So the king of Jericho finds out that Rahab had, ha, is involved. So he says to them, bring, bring the men out who have entered your house because they have come to spy on the whole land. But here's Rahab. Rahab does not tell this guy the truth. Rahab says, yeah, he, she's not forthright. She says some truth. We have taken two men and had hidden them. She said, yes, the men came to me but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went, but you need to go and get after them quickly because you may catch up to them. But in reality, she had taken them up, this is in verse 6, and, and up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax she had laid on the roof. So they were on the roof kind of shingles up there. So the men sent out to pursue the spies on the road trying to, trying to find them. And, and what happens is Rahab it believed. And so the, she, she went up to the roof and said to the guys that are up there hiding, I know the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of God's people, because of you. We have heard, and here, here's, here's what they have heard, how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Shihon and Og, the, the, the two kings of the Amorites, and east of the Jordan. And that's Israel, is, Israel is, is kicking butt on the way to the Promised Land. We've heard you completely destroyed them. We heard of it all. Our hearts melted in fear. Everyone with courage failed because of you. For the Lord, your God, in heaven and above and on the earth below, it's your God. And so she then makes a deal with Josh. Joshua, please promise me that because of my kindness that I have shown you, that you would show kindness to my family. And sure enough, they, they show her kindness. And they say, listen, you're, you're good to go. And so she lets them down on ropes, down out the window, off the wall, and down into the hills, and they escape. I, I love that, that particular story of Rahab and, and her faith. And she is mentioned in the Heroes of Faith chapter in the book of Hebrews in chapter 11. She is one of the heroes of faith because of that. And, and here she is a woman, and she's a prostitute, and, and the king knows that she got intel, and she had the men there, and yet she showed great courage and faith. And what she saw was the key. She saw what God was doing on the way to the gates, on the way to her house. She saw what God had done, and she had faith saying, there ain't no other God out there like this. No one, nothing compares to this God. So she says, I am changing teams. I'm going on to the Lord's team, and she did that. And then you find the prostitute, Rahab, in the genealogy of Jesus himself. So it is, it is awesome to see her as a hero of the faith, even though of, you know, a little irrepute in her character and her profession and her lifestyle and her issues. But do you see how amazing God can, what he can do in our brokenness, 
in our failings, in our weaknesses, in our flaws, God is able to do amazing, spectacular, phenomenal things. And he did that with the, the prostitute Rahab. So, so now we, we, keep, we keep reading here that that, that city was a huge uh, blockade, and, and, and so they, they were stuck there. But before that blockade, they got the intel. Now they have to cross the Jordan. And, and it's not like uh, Hunlock Creek, you know. It's not like Fishing Creek where you can find some places where you can, you can hop over. You can find some places. It's not like that. The Jordan, at the place where they needed to cross, the, the water, the volume of water, the pressure, the power, the depth of the water was, you stepped your toe in, you're 30 miles downstream. It, it was that kind, and the water, the time they were getting through, it was high time, high water. So you weren't going to just step in and, uh, you know, you, you were gone. So that was a huge blockade. That was giving the people in Jericho some, some great comfort. I did get a, a hit here. It says, he doesn't say, be strong and courageous. I'll take the trial away from you. He says, you be strong and courageous, and I go with you. And that's a point, too, that we, we can focus on. He, he's saying, listen, you be strong and courageous, and good luck. Be strong and courageous, and ah, you better pack a big lunch, because you're going to need it. He says, be strong and courageous, because guess what? I'm going with you. The, the, the God of all creation goes with you. So in this time of uncertainty, in this time of, of, of you know, a fear and we're scared, he says, guess what? You just be strong and courageous because I'm with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there for you. I'm going with you. I'm on this for you. Okay, so, so now here we are. The volume of water, the pressure, the depth, the the the. the, the, the the expanse of getting across where they had to go, they weren't they weren't gonna gonna do it. The, the 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 folks in Jericho were comforting, saying, "Listen, we've got this gigantic wall, and plus the Jordan. They're not they're they're done here. They're done here. So let's 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 look at in, in chapter three what happens. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set from sit them, and went to the Jordan. They camped there before crossing. After three days, the officers throughout the camp gave orders to the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out of your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before, but keep your distance about 3,000 cubits between you and the ark. Back then, the ark was so sacred and so special, you, you, can't, you couldn't go near it. Only the, 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 the priests and the consecrated ones, the blessed ones, could cut, touch it. If you were to touch it, even, even trying to, and, and that happened, you would be killed. You would die. And so here they go. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do amazing things with you. And so here we go. Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass on ahead of the people, and they took up and went ahead of them. The Lord said, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel. What an awesome thing to hear. If you were Joshua and you heard that, get ready because I'm going to exalt you, Joshua, in the eyes of those people. They will know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Today, people, our Lord God says that about you and I. Those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, that love him, he says that to you. Just like I was with Moses and Joshua, I am with you too. Okay, he says, tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's water, go and stand in the river. Now, you're, you, that's the tough part. He, he's not saying to you, just like the, the text I got, he, he's saying you, it's not that you're going to stay dry in all this. You're going to have to get wet. That means I, I can protect you and save you and deliver you, but that does not mean you might have to feel the heat a little bit or you might get wet a little bit. That means you might get uncomfortable. And so that's what he says. He says you're going to probably have to get wet. So, so be ready for that. So that means you go in. So sure enough. 
Joshua said to you, come here and listen to the, the words of the Lord your God. This is how you would know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, and the Perseites, and the Gitchites, and the Amorites, and the Jesuits. See, a lot of ites there. See, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go down in the Jordan ahead of you. And so he, he's picking the people, he's picking the people to go. And so to, 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 to be there to carry. And so we'll, we'll pick it up here now. It says, The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant st stopped in the middle of Jordan stood on dry ground. The priests went in with the Ark. The water, it says, back, backing up in verse 16, it says, The water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap. That must have been a tremendous heap of water a great distance away at the town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarthan, while the water flowing down to the sea of the Ar Araba, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. Can, can you imagine, just like the spectacular crossing of the Red Sea, the water stops and heaps up a great distance away. Because remember, you're going to take a, a, a million people across that river. It was going to be a pretty wide distance. And so that heap of water stands. And can you imagine the people? Can you, can you imagine the people in Jericho saying, oh, here they come. Look, look what their God is doing. He's stopped up the water, and it is piling up way up there. And the Israelites are crossing on dry land. The Israelites did just as Joshua commanded. And they took the 12, and, and they did some ritualistic things that God wanted them to do. They carried the Ark of the Covenant, and they crossed over. I mean, that, that, is, that is a pretty amazing thing. And so they, they did some more ritualistic things. We're, we're going we're gonna to jump down into chapter 5, verse 13. And so now it's go time. Now remember, Joshua, his profession was he was a leader of God's army. He was one of like the general high command strategic man of war fighter. He, he, was, he was like Moses' right hand general. He was the, 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 the battle czar dude. He was a strategic, super effective commander of God's army. And so he knew how to fight. He knew how to lead his troops into battle. He was a strategic, very effective warlord that Joshua was. He was good. And so now God is going to allow him to take the city of Jericho. So you've got to understand here that I'm sure Joshua, because of his amazing faith, when he hears the battle plan from God, that it's a little concerning. It's not his typical battle plan. And this is the way the Lord works. You know, we, we have these expectations that he's going to do it this way, and he always does it a different way that is sometimes confusing to us, perplexing to us, even ridiculous maybe to us, that that's how God's going to deliver us, me, this way. And so that's, once again, where, where we have to rely on faith. So, so let's, let, let's take up, the, uh, let's take up the, the look here. So he, he says this in verse 13. Now Joshua was near Jericho. He looked up, saw a man standing in front of him, and his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went up and asked him, Are you for us or are you an enemy? Neither, he replied, but I, have I am the commander of the army of the Lord. I have come now. And Joshua fell on his face. So God sends a visitor down to Joshua. And he says, listen, this is the message I had. The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because the Israelites and no one went in or came out. And, and you got to remember how, I mean, when you do the, the deep dive into, into what the walls of Jericho were like, it was a two-tiered wall. So there was a giant wall here. Then there was some, some a, a gap and then there was another giant wall. They were like 30, 40 feet high. They were like 6, 8, 10 feet thick. You, these things were designed to keep people out for decades. 
centuries. So these walls were not just some little brick wall you could tip over. These walls were substantial, designed to keep war away for centuries. So these were big, nasty walls. So without going into the whole, uh, the details of chapter 6, he, he is told, Joshua, that he's to march around with his army. Can you imagine the mockery that Joshua, this, this war lord, specialist, combat veteran, and all of his guys were getting abused when they simply marched around playing instruments. They marched around the whole city. Six days in a row, they march around and then go back to camp. Here's what's awesome is obviously, you can imagine some of the, 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 the conversation around the, 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 bat, the, the warrior's campground. Is this what our commander is telling us to do? We're going to march around playing musical instruments? getting laughed at and mocked and abused by the, the guys, the warriors on the wall on the seventh day. But they, they trusted Joshua. It was obvious that Joshua was a man of credibility and great leadership, and people trusted him. His soldiers trusted Joshua. An awesome place. So on the seventh day, let, let, let's, let's, let's get into that account. It says, on the seventh day, verse 15 in chapter 6, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day, the city, they circled the city seven times. And the seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army to shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And the city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she hid the spies. And when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, and when the men gave a loud shout, that gigantic wall collapsed. Can you imagine being a part of that fight? They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it. Men, women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Not one living thing was spared in that entire city of Jericho. And, and we, can, we can have discussions about that, but God wants complete obedience. God wanted to purge. The, remember, these people were very wicked and I'm not saying, listen, if you're a bad person, you need to be purged. You have to understand that God's justice and God's purging and God's purifying and God's cleansing for his people had to be absolute. And as his people, we had to absolutely obey that. And Joshua did. And so God was purging and cleaning and purifying the land, the promised land for his people. And so the only one spared was Rahab and her people. And Joshua obeyed completely. And, and so that, that's, the, that's the key. If, if anything really highlights and sums up tonight's study is that in, in a time that justifiably we should be a little afraid, we should have some concerns, we, we should be worried, uh, many people are, but, but God is saying to you, listen, be strong and courageous. Obey what I tell you. Listen to my word. Don't go right. Don't go left. Obey it all. And I'm going to be with you. All we do is be strong and courageous. Obey God's word. Obey him completely. Not just half the time or even most of the time. All the time. And God will be with you. And he goes with you. Just like Joshua and the people experienced tremendous victory, you will too. We can all experience tremendous victory in a time when a lot of people are, are claiming defeat and, and are hiding and, and sheltering up. We can claim a tremendous victory. How is the church going to lead? How are the believers going to lead in this time? And, and let me just say that we're going to be cautious. We're going to be guarded. 
We're, we're going to be diligent. We're going to obey authority. We're going to do the best that we can all the while. We're going to be strong and courageous, obey our Heavenly Father completely, all the time, every time, and we know that he'll be with us, and he will see us all through this. He will see you through it. Um, let me pray with you guys, and we'll get going. Father, we love you and thank you and praise you that uh, you're with us, that, that we need to be strong and courageous. We need, to, we need to obey you all the time, every time. And Father, you're with us. So Father, we pray for that on, our, on all of our people, that you be with us. Help us to be strong and courageous. Help us to obey your word completely all the time, every time. And Father, we know you'll be with us. So we thank you. Bless our family. Be with all the people out there that are hurting and struggling with a variety of things. I pray, Father, in a mighty way, be with them. Protect and watch over them. And we just give you the praise and glory. We love you in, in Jesus' name. Amen. So listen, folks, hopefully uh, stay connected to uh, your phone and what's going on on the website and some directions as to some new things happening starting this weekend so stay connected there if you need us reach out to us and hopefully we'll be able to be uh, seeing you guys real time here in the in the near future but in the meantime if you need us reach out to us and uh, we'll be there for you we love you blessings to you and uh, see you guys hopefully soon lord bless you